How's it going everyone? It's Sam. Today I want to talk to you about the top 10 cryptos for 2022. Now with that in mind, I do want to give a little background for where I think we are overall in crypto right now. So we are going to talk about Bitcoin a little bit longer than everything else. But I do want to talk to you about the top 10 cryptos here today. So we can see that the market's down a little bit, but we have to think long term what's going to happen a year from now, six months from now, and not just think about the day to day because it's really easy to get caught up in that. So if you guys don't mind hitting the like button and the subscribe button, this video is going to take a lot longer than my normal video and is gonna have a lot more put into it. So if you guys like that, please hit the like and subscribe so that way I know. Also, I do wanna talk about something a little bit different first. Now I do wanna talk about NFTs just for a minute. So recently a CryptoPunk sold for over $10 million. There is an extreme amount of money that is flowing into NFTs even if there is red or green in the market, people still want this digital artwork. The problem is that a lot of people don't have access to these NFTs, for example, right? So you might be able to grab some crypto potato pancake or something like that. But the really high quality NFTs are outside of almost everyone's price range, which is where today's show sponsor comes in, Otis. So Otis is an investing app where you can get fractional ownerships of rare collectibles, art, comics, sneakers, NFTs, playing cards, all different types of rare collectibles. Personally, I am really interested in the NFTs, such as a CryptoPunk, because I don't wanna go spend several hundred thousands of dollars to buy one. Now, they do give you on the profile a little background on the actual item. They give you how many shares there are. They'll give you how many investors are invested in it and more information like that. So you can make money a couple different ways. You can either sell your shares to other people on the Otis platform, or if Otis sells the product for more than you paid in a buyout. Now, using the link underneath the video, if you deposit $50 on the platform, you actually get one free share of a collectible. So if you guys want to check that out underneath the video, definitely check it out using that code. Thank you to Otis for sponsoring this part of the video. Let's take a look at where we are in the crypto market and just in the market in general. So recently, the House and Senate voted to raise the debt ceiling by $2.5 trillion. So they are going to get about a year out of this $2.5 trillion. And at this time, CPI and PPI is going insane. What's interesting is a lot of people don't really look at the producer price index or the PPI. A lot of people look at the CPI because that's what we generally think of as inflation. And that the CPI is about 6.8. The producer price index is about 9.6. And this is considered a leading economic indicator rather than a lagging economic indicator like CPI because this is how much it costs for these different companies to actually make their items. So a lot of people are thinking we're actually going to see CPI go up. A lot of people also think that CPI is not real. A lot of people think that it's a rigged system and that we're actually closer to 10, 12, 14, 15% inflation. Also, if you just look at the assets that are going up in value, they're going up 10, 20, 30%. The indexes are up 30% on the year. So that shows that there is an uh, extreme amount of inflation, especially asset price inflation. Now, some countries are doing some types of policies to, to cut down on inflation. The Bank of England just surprised investors yesterday at the time of this recording by raising interest rates. Britain became the first big rich economy to experience rate, in, uh, rate increases. So what did they do? Well, they rose rates or they raised rates from 0.1% to 0.25, that's a very small amount. So they felt like it was big enough to raise rates, but they still can't raise them that much. The US is waiting a good amount of time before they start raising rates. They're talking about four to six months before they start raising rates. Now, of course, they are saying that we're gonna raise them three times, but back in 2018, we did see th that there can be some issues with that. The whole market dropped. There was a, t a taper tantrum and uh, there is just a sentiment that the Fed won't be able to raise rates as quickly as is needed because of the fact that they are so connected to the stock market and really are focusing on the well-being of the stock market. So at the same time, all that is happening at the same time, inflation is rising like crazy. And uh, we see a need for crypto like we've never seen before. Bitcoin on exchanges is down to a three-year low. So the demand is gonna increase, the supply is going to decrease, or it already is decreasing. Also, 
we can see that there are a lot of people that are fearful, which some people would say is a bad thing because that shows negative sentiment in the market, but that's typically a buying zone. That's typically a good time to buy is when people are fearful. You wanna sell when people are being greedy. So with that being said, we also are at reset RSI levels, right? We're on the weekly here, and we're in the 40 to 45 range here. So we are reset to the levels we were at when Bitcoin was right around $30,000. Typically, we see a blow off top where we see a very high RSI on the two week, uh, and we have not gotten there yet. With that being said, there is a lot of adoption. So we talked about how there's a need for Bitcoin. We talked about how the supply is going down, and now we're showing the demand going up. So the demand is going to go up. Commonwealth Bank of Australia recognizes risks in missing out on crypto. They say, we see risks in participating, but we see bigger risks in not participating. So Bank of Australia, Commonwealth, they are going to offer cryptocurrency services to some of their clients, but this gets rolled out over time. This is not a one day thing. This, this happens with a small group and then a bigger group and then a bigger group. And Australia is not the only country to do this. Switzerland, Colombia, Spain, there are countries that are, or banks that are adopting it in countries all over the world. They are going to offer this to their clients here very soon. And we just got word that the federal regulator says credit unions can partner with crypto providers. Their new guidance will allow them to support the buying and selling of cryptocurrency. So how long do you think it's going to be before we start getting credit unions here in the U.S.? that are going to start offering these cryptocurrencies. I believe they have a couple trillion dollars in assets too. I think it's $1.5 trillion in assets and full countries are now adopting Bitcoin. We saw El Salvador do that. Typically, I would assume that we would see a domino effect. We're sure countries are watching to see how El Salvador does, but then one more country will pick it up and then it'll be quicker after that. We also have companies that are raising large amounts of money. So we just talked about all the banks that are, that are introducing Bitcoin. Well, NIDIG, which helps bring cryptocurrency services to a lot of these banks and financial institutions, they just raised $1 billion. So there's a lot of people that, and a lot of companies that want to invest in some of these cryptocurrency startups. These, I've said this over the last couple of days, this is the type of company you want to be raising money because it helps all cryptocurrencies. Now. There's also a lot of money floating around the cryptocurrency ecosystem. Binance launches a $1 billion fund to fast track blockchain tech development. A lot of other companies are doing something similar or a lot of other projects, whether it's 700 million, 500 million, 100 million, there's a lot of money floating around in all these ecosystems. And at the same time, crypto is gaining, is gaining ground like we've never seen it before. Right here, you can see that based on the projections, it took us about 7.5 years from 1997 to 2005 for us to gain about 870 million new internet users. We're expecting that over the next four years for crypto, just based on what we've seen so far. And we still have companies that are buying. So like Morgan Stanley was one of the companies that helped raise the $1 billion, but they're also buying Bitcoin behind the scenes by buying Grayscale shares. So they're not buying Bitcoin directly, but they still need exposure to it. So that is the first cryptocurrency, everyone. <laughs> that is Bitcoin for you. I think Bitcoin is probably the lowest risk, highest reward asset that you can get. Now, of course, that, de that depends on how you how you measure it, right? And where you think it will go in the future. But I wanna kinda of go down the line. And some of these cryptos I've talked about before, some I've talked about a lot less, and some no one really talks about on YouTube. So I'm going to stick a little bit more to the high caps, but I do have some smaller caps. And let's be clear, I'm very biased in this. I hold uh, all but one of these cryptos here today. And that's because I believe in them strongly. The one that I don't hold, I'm actually looking at buying here soon. So Ethereum is number one on the list. Ethereum, obviously the second largest crypto out there, a lot of money in total value locked. It accounts for the majority of total value locked or across all crypto. So that is the number one smart contract platform. You see 7.26% locked up in Ethereum 2.0, which is about 30, over $30 billion worth. Now this will be unlocked when Ethereum 2.0 comes out, but remember, Ethereum 2.0 is going to be very bullish 
for Ethereum. Now, there might be a little bit of selling when that happens, which will be a great time to buy, in my opinion. We're expecting that this coming year. Who knows exactly when it will come out, but hopefully it does come out in the second quarter like expected. We can see EIP-1559 reduced uh, the supply of Ethereum or the new supply of Ethereum by about two thirds. When we have 2.0 coming out, it will actually make it a net negative. So 2% will be burned every single year, give or take, depending on the volume of transactions that go through at that time. Larger companies or larger investing firms feel comfortable with Ethereum just because it is a larger asset. They can throw in a billion and it won't really push up the price all that much. Of course, it does push up the price, but unlike a lot of other smaller cryptos, it's not going to send it skyrocketing and they can put in more money, right? If you're a very large institution, you don't want to do a ton of research to go buy some speculative investment and then push up the price and have to keep on buying in at a higher amount. One crypto that not too many people talk about is BSC, Binance Smart Chain. So it is what some people seem to forget. It's still one of the largest cryptos. It's number three. It's right behind Ethereum and nothing else is even close to it. So why is that? Well, it's a great product. Honestly, it is It is a very easy to use product. There are a lot of coins that are built on it because it's so easy to use to build new cryptos on. There was a meme coin mania which pushed it up, but it's been doing really well for about the last year. But if we see any big push in meme coins again or anything like that, it should do well. And typically that would be towards the end of a very bullish market. They did introduce BEP95 on October 22nd to speed up Binance's burn process. So every single three months, if you didn't know this, they take a percentage of their crypto or of their earnings and then they buy back BNB off the market and burn it. So there is a net reduction every single quarter in BNB, but now they have BEP95, which also increases the burn. You know, one other layer one that I think you have to take a look at for 2022 is Solana. The transactions per second are very high and everyone is bullish on a crypto until something goes wrong, right? There's always, there's always a trade-off in these layer ones, right? Ethereum is very secure, but it's very slow and very expensive. Ethereum, very fast, but it's more centralized. So this is a little bit old, but you can see the average fee per transaction is under a cent. This makes it usable for a lot of people, for NFTs, for other types of gaming and transactions. That way you can actually have a lot of transactions without really paying that much in fees. And it continues to gain more adoption. Of course it is more centralized. That's a pushback I always get on it. First of all, there are less validators. It's around a thousand now, not 700. But then also the the majority of the people that hold Solana are whales because of how it was set up. And it is a newer project. There were a lot of VCs that got large amounts of money or large amounts of sold tokens. It's a superior product to Ethereum right now, at least in the in terms of how quickly you can use it, how many transactions per second it allows. That being said, it did get attacked recently or a lot of people thought it was attacked. It was spread that it was a DDoS attack, but they confirmed that it was not attacked. It was just that it was slowing down because of some transaction speed issues. Now there's always a trade-off when you pick these layer ones, which is why I diversify between several of them. But from there, we can look at Polygon, which is a layer two. Polygon to invest 250 million Matic into zero knowledge tech. A lot of people think ZK rollups will be a huge benefit to the to crypto in general because it provides more privacy for some of the transactions and they are trying to make themselves a leading force in the ZK field. They just purchased a ZK rollup company for about $400 million. With that in mind, I did just do a full video on Polygon. So if you guys wanna check out that video, I'll link it on the end screen so you can go watch the full video. Now Matic is turning into a fan favorite, but another fan favorite from just a couple weeks ago is crypto.com. So Crow token was pumped up like crazy because of the fact that they were growing like crazy. Crypto.com made a big marketing push. They got in the news a lot and a lot of people were excited. They went from just about 10 cents back in July all the way up to 90 cents back just a month ago. Now they've come down a good amount, about 40% or so. And a lot of people think that maybe this is the end for Crow.com or Crypto.com. I don't think that's the case. I think Crow will do quite well. The thing is with these tokens, this one and VGX, which VGX I'm invested into, Crow I'm not because I don't use Crypto.com. But with a lot of these utility tokens, you get a benefit from using them 
or holding them on that website. So if you hold Crow, you get extra benefits on crypto.com. If you hold VGX, you get extra benefits on Voyager. And you have to realize these pumped around the same time, actually. They pumped up a, a significant amount and this provides a lot of utility for holders so if you are someone that holds these cryptos long term and you want them to get interest and this is going to continue for a long time out it would make sense to buy these tokens and then just never sell them why would you sell them right because you're going to get extra interest you're going to get trading fee discounts access to things that you wouldn't normally get access to so with that in mind they are great to hold for long term I personally hold Voyager because it gives me a decent amount boost on my other holdings. Now, if these companies continue to grow and crypto continues to go up, they will do well. It's just that they got pumped up very quickly because there was a lot of excitement, especially in uh, November. We did see a lot of excitement just in general in crypto. And that's when it makes a lot of sense to hold these. This validates what we're talking about, right? When crypto is doing well, these things pump. So that's something to consider, especially because a lot of the world doesn't have access to crypto yet or doesn't actually use crypto or buy crypto yet. And then Decentraland, right? We need to take a look at some of the of some of the metaverse tokens and metaverse worlds out there. Decentraland is one of my favorites. Of course, with these cryptos, you have to realize not too many people use them yet. So that's the big risk. A lot of them aren't fully finished products. They're always working on them. But if they have a working product, even if it's not finished, that is a good sign. I like Decentraland, but keep in mind, these are expensive. If you look at how many users they actually have and then their market cap, it's an insane amount of money per user. But there's a lot of potential here. In my mind, Facebook starting to focus on the metaverse is going to push more people to all metaverses. So it's gonna bring a lot of people into that realm. And of course, they're gonna start off on Facebook, but they might not be happy with the fact that Facebook is listening to them or puts up ads all over the place or is taking their data. And they might look for something like this where you can maybe have NFTs and you can make money and there's a ecosystem and it's decentralized away from some of the big brother corporations. So with that in mind, Decentraland, I think will do well. I think the top metaverse cryptos and the top metaverses will do really well and then a lot of the other metaverses will kind of fall off it's not like gaming in my opinion right a lot of these say that they're gaming and metaverse but if it's more metaverse than gaming i think only a few will do well in gaming there are a lot of games that can do well especially if there's a good uh if there's good tokenomics behind it those gaming tokens can do really well but metaverses i think it will be kill or be killed they recently had a a large sale. That's something that always pushes up the price, it seems like whenever there's a large sale or some news about some company entering the metaverse. But we have to remember, it was up to almost $6. And now it's back down around $3. So we're almost 50% off of our highs. So I think it will push back up. It's just that like a lot of these other cryptos, it was pushed up a lot in price because there was a lot of excitement. Now one other crypto that is very small, it's a very small market cap, but I think is less risky than most cryptos around this market cap is Phantasma. So sold token is the crypto that we're talking about here, and it pumped up to almost $4. And what this is, is it's a smart contract layer one platform. So you can create on demand, no no unnecessary costs. You can create nested NFTs and multi-layer NFTs. You can get perpetual royalties automatically, time limited access to content and infusing multiple assets. So this provides a layer of interaction and a layer of flexibility that a lot of these other NFTs don't have. So this is a small market cap, but still it is a little bit protected in the way that it doesn't focus on one game doing well. It has a variety of games that use them and that decreases the risk in my opinion we've had some strong support around this 190 range recently but of course with any of these cryptos i should say i should have said this at the beginning with any of these cryptos they could fall down that's why you always have to diversify and always reduce your risk as much as possible at least for what you're comfortable with so that's why i like to diversify that's why i like having some cash on the sidelines and then the last crypto that kind of goes to that point is donkey so donkey helps you gain interest or apy on some of your cryptos 
So they are copy farming. So you can get in here, you can put your money in an investing strategy that someone else uses and gets yield on. And if you stake your donkey tokens, you actually get a bonus APY depending on how much you have in here. So of course, if prices fall down, like cake fell down and BNB fell down, since I invested in here, the total profit is negative in dollars, but you can see that it's actually gaining more cake and more BNB all the time. And I also have, I also have BUSD in here too. So you can actually get a significant amount of interest. So if the market turns down or you just wanna gain extra interest on your assets, it makes sense to throw some in Donkey. And this is not sponsored. I have worked with them in that capacity before, but I actually use Donkey. So this is where a crypto like Donkey can do quite well. So overall, that is what I see in the crypto market. Those are some of the cryptos I think will do well this coming year. Now, of course, I'm not saying that these are going to be the top 10 performers, top 10 out of the 10,000 performers. I don't know what is going to be number one, number two, number three. But these are some of the cryptos that I'm focusing on and I think will do well depending on the rate environment and depending on the crypto environment. But I want to hear your thoughts underneath the video. Let me know which of these you really like. Let me know if you hate any of these. Let me know if there's any that I should include on the list. I could also include other cryptocurrencies like Cardano. So if they actually have the DEX go live and it all goes smoothly, it could definitely be included in here and could be a banner year because it has been sold off a lot. I could also include VeChain, one of the best blue chips out there. I have a lot of cryptos that I can include, even Polkadot, which is down over 50% from its highs, which interoperates between the different cryptos. There are a lot of cryptos I could include in this, so don't beat me up too bad. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it, and I will see you in the next video. Check out Otis underneath. Thanks.